Hi everybody, it's Andre from the Eaglesoft Field Guide and hey, just wanted to come to you with a video for the new version of Eaglesoft, which is 21.3. Uh, wanted to uh, go through a few things with you and I wanted to show you. Um, I did make a post back on January 29th uh, letting you know that 21.3 was available and uh, you should be able to find that if you just do a search in the Facebook group for uh, version 21.3. I will put a link to this um, post in the comments below, uh, but the version 21.3 is coming out and it is due to an important update for e-statements. So if you're sending e-statements through Patterson, you have to do the 21.30 upgrade. Uh, beyond that, there's some other things that are going to be talked about in this video. Um, a lot of them I won't be able to demo for you because a lot of them have to do with the, um, here is the new features guide. There also is a link to this in the uh, comments below. But for new features, one of the first things that you're going to see is there is an e-prescription clinician enhancement. Now, I can't show you this because I don't have clinician installed in my demo database. I can't show you something live on something that is a product that is sort of outside Eaglesoft. So clinician is something that you guys, if you are using Eaglesoft clinician to do e-prescriptions, this is something you need to talk to the PTC about. Um, but the new feature guide will kind of take you through what's new about it. There's just an enhancement. Um, which allows for the patient notes to write back so that you actually, when you write a prescription through e-prescription um, e clini e e clinician, it will actually put a note in the patient's chart that that prescription was created. I think this is a fantastic feature. I, I, I hate when you have a third party software that they don't write back and forth a, across each other. So this is a fantastic enhancement. Uh, this is something I thought would happen years ago when clinician was added. But now when you write a prescription in, 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 uh, in clinician, it will actually write back to the software just as if you had written the script through Eaglesoft, you're going to get a line item in the patient's notes that the prescription was written. So that's a, a great new feature. Uh, I can't demo it for you because I don't have clinician installed, but that's uh, one of the big things that's happening. Now, the next thing you're going to see is passwords that are expiring. I love this. Now, for HIPAA reasons, for lots of other reasons, uh, passwords within a practice management software should expire. And there are going to be, um, in, there's changes, there are changes um, to the password in um, Eaglesoft. So let me show you live. So if let's go to list, let's go to providers and staff, and let's just take uh, one of our hygienists. All right. And within the setup of the hygienist, you're going to see that there, uh, these um, security features have moved to the bottom. So they used to be on the side here. They moved to the bottom, but we now have a feature to automatically lock a user. So if we have somebody who has left the practice. We can just lock their that user and they can no longer do anything in the software. So a lot of offices have set up remote access. You know, uh, I'm not a big fan of it, but a lot of offices set up remote access. And now if that person had remote access to the software, I mean, to the office, they can't do anything within Eaglesoft if you've locked them. All right. Now that also means we've got to make sure that people aren't sharing passwords and things like that. But here's the other part of this. Notice this new little icon up here, which is we can change the setting of passwords. So maximum failed password attempts. So if somebody doesn't know their password, you can set this and I'm going to suggest that you set this to like three. So if somebody tries to get into the software, they have three attempts to get in before they're locked out. The other thing is, this is how soon the passwords are going to expire. I'm going to suggest that you set this for 30 days. This isn't a real software that I'm working on. This isn't a real database of real people and you know real HIPAA uh, uh, information. So uh, not a big deal for me, but I would set this for 30 days, 60 days or 90 days. Um, no more than that before passwords will expire. Passwords have to be a minimum of eight, char of eight characters. All right. And then that password reminder 
So you're going to get reminded that your password is uh, is going to expire and you can set that for two weeks before. All right. And you have to have a uh, at least two things checked. So you have to have either upper and lowercase letters, a number within the password or a symbol. And you have to have at least two of those things checked in order to create a password. All right. And that's going to happen. Your existing password, I'll, I'll just give you a one hint. Your existing password is fine until it expires. And then when you create a new password, it's going to require those things. All right. I always like upper and lowercase letters and symbols. I don't always use numbers, but I always like at least symbols. But you can check all three of them if you want. So, all right. Um, but just think if you check all three, that means your password is going to have to have an uppercase letter, a lowercase letter, a number and a symbol. So I'd like at least the two pick which ones you like and make it so. All right. But that's the big changes that are happening there with the password enhancements um, and with eClinician. The last thing is really just a simple thing, but in your uh, printer administration, they've just changed sort of the look of it, makes it a little cleaner, a little easier to follow what's going on. Um, there's still gonna be a printer administration in the um, administrative part of uh, the software. And then when you get to the clinical software, so I'm gonna go over to the clinical screen, there is a, a printer administration here all right, so you've got both places, but it just makes it a little easier. And you can see that I, by default, have all of my things go to print to PDF. So I don't get a lot of paper. Um, I can pick and choose uh, what I want to print to paper, but by default, they go to PDF. Um, that's just my preference. So um, those are the enhancements. Um, if you haven't upgraded to version 21.2, then this may all be new to you. And there's some, I've done some other videos on 21.2 um, and there's some features there that you really wanna look at. The, my favorite is the enhancement for the imaging showing next to the chart, uh, but you might wanna look at that other video for that. Uh, but just a quick video to go through those three things, e-prescription, uh, provider password enhancements, um, and then the new look of printer administration. And like I said, if you guys are using e-statements, you have to upgrade to 21.3. So e-statement users, 21.3, make sure you upgrade. And then here's my final comment. If you have any third party software, that means confirmation software, that means you connect a sensor to Eaglesoft through a secondary software, um, you do anything with e-claims, um, through a third party software, you need to make sure that those softwares are compatible with 21.3. You can call the PTC, you can call that third party software um, and find out that they're compatible and do whatever you need to do in order to make those changes so that your third party softwares don't get blocked out when you're upgrading to 21.3. So make sure you do your due diligence, don't just upgrade. Um, just because you think that you want to add that that uh, enhancement, that one thing you saw, don't do it until you've done your due diligence to find out what the deal is. Now, I'm running 21.3 with Adobe 10, Adobe Reader 10. I haven't had any issues with SmartDoc. I haven't had any issues with opening my schedule. I haven't had any of those things. Um, my preference windows stay open just like they did in 21.2. So all of the things, I haven't had any hiccups since I upgraded uh, to 21.3. I'm running in my, uh, I, I run this on three different computers so I can test things and see what happens. So three different computers, three different configurations, printers, scanners, all that kind of stuff. I haven't had any issues, but I'm not gonna tell you that you're not gonna have any issues because who knows. Just wanted to come to you with those things. Really quick 10 minute video about uh, what all these enhancements. And uh, like I said, go look at the post for what's new in 21 and 21.3 and then the new uh, features guide that I'm gonna link in the comments. Thanks guys, bye-bye.